what I have been shopping at Sainsbury's lately and wow there's a lot more variety in the Sainsbury's than Asda or Tesco slowly but surely Sainsbury's is actually become my favorite supermarket a little bit more classy a little bit more expensive you notice the people around here are more upper class compared to myself who's pretty you know an average fucking joey at the end of the day the variety and just general shits that i've seen in here is amazing is absolutely amazing shop at sainsbury's if you can a little bit more expensive a little bit more upper class but good quality stuff like the mushrooms look superb they look very fresher than what they do compared to asda which is big for me so they do an amazing amazing dark chocolate section look at all this chocolate look Look at all this kind of madness. Look at all that. Look. Look at all that. I've seen some good recommendations on people's Instagrams regarding chocolates and what should go for, but look at all that. Just peng. Just unreal. See that type of stuff? Just puts a smile on my face. Weirdo. Not the most exciting food shop I ever got in my whole entire life. We picked up some of the white cocoa pops, white chocolate cocoa pops. We picked up, I don't even fucking see them, I'm fucking out. Picked up some mushrooms, some sliced mushrooms, and we also picked up some uh, Listerine mouthwash. I needed some mouthwash, I like using mouthwash. I use it twice a day if anyone gives a shit. Once in the morning, once before I go to bed. Peng, uh, and this was on sale, and I, Listerine just sounds good. I've seen it on the adverts, so I just bought Listerine. That is probably the one of the worst food shops you'll ever see. Sainsbury's is pen. That's one of my favorite shops now. I love Sainsbury's. So using pink Himalayan salt, I put two grams on top of my oats. The reason behind that is I like the fucking taste of pink Himalayan salt. And also there's a few more minerals in, in pink Himalayan salt compared to normal t uh, table salt or sea salt, whatever you want to call it. So put two grams on top of that as well. We know that carbohydrate uptake is down to water intake and sodium intake. So it's very important that you get your salt in. But I would recommend putting a little bit on top of your oats. The macros for this meal are going to be on the screen now. We have 130 grams of oats and we have 35 grams of uh, whey protein let me guess off the top of my head i think it's going to be roughly about 50 grams no about yeah i'd say about 48 grams of protein maybe about 70 80 grams of carbs and about 12 grams of fat just off the top of my head because i know I, I do this shit every single day hopefully i'm right anyway when we sit and eat this go to the gym for roughly about three o'clock it is now quarter past one so i normally leave it for about 90 minutes or so um and then we're gonna get cracking onto the fucking gym guess what day it is it's a fucking leg day, innit? <laughs> and then you go to the gym. If you want to see that, I can film that. And, uh, Not gonna lie, on train day, you just can't beat. I have two bowl of oats on a train day, and, and you just can't beat it. I'm doing this like, entirely on my phone. Um, so, mm. I don't think it's too bad. <laughs> The intro workout is something which I've utilized throughout my whole entire prep. Again, I've said this so many times before, it is not essential. You are not going to build 25 inch arms off having intro workout. It's, it's not going to yield that sort of benefit. However, it may potentially give you that extra 2 or 3%, which in natural bodybuilding, like I've said, can make a huge difference. That 2 to 3% can make a huge difference. So my intro workout sources at the moment are, I've got EAAs from uh, Insight Sup, the Muscle Sports and Amino revs. I use bomb sip, bomb, bomb sip candy, candy flavor or bomb pop flavor. Either one of those I use. EAs again having the complete protein. I also use electrolytes from my protein. I use five grams of electrolytes, which of course we know electrolytes, magnesium and zinc. Well, well when we not magnesium, not zinc, sorry, but when we are training, we 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 typically deplete ourselves of magnesium, potassium and stuff like that. The electrolytes will keep you nice and hydrated. We also have creatine. I'm still taking creatine despite being three um, three weeks out. I'm taking five grams of creatine. I'm also taking highly branched cyclic dextrin. So I'm taking 30 grams of a highly branched cyclic dextrin, which is an easy digesting carbohydrate for me to utilize whilst I'm training. So I'm always sipping on some sort of carbohydrate whilst I'm training. And also I'll implement Pepto Pro as well from bulk powders. So majority of my stuff you get off bulk powders or my protein. 
and then a few of the EAAs and stuff like that I, I get off um, inside supplements. That's my intro workout. I normally simply, I typically sit this as I'm on the way to the gym. So of course I want to kind of utilize these quick, easy uh, digesting carbohydrates. And I normally finish it about halfway through my session. So I, I actually utilize the full, there's nothing worse than finishing your intro workout at the end of your session. Uh, and you know, you're drinking carbs towards the end of the session, like you're not gonna utilize it. So I always recommend finishing it midway through your session and you'll be a lot better off by doing that. But I'm gonna put this in the freezer for about an hour and it's gonna have a nice little hang, little cold beverage when I train, which would be superb. I've just arrived in, well, just about to go to the, into the gym. And one thing I've realized is I left my intro workout in the fucking freezer and I'm absolutely gutted. Now I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, my workout's gonna be fucking terrible because I haven't got my intro workout. So I'm gonna see if the gym have any intro workout carbohydrates or anything like that because I haven't had, I've not had my intro on this whole entire prep. Slightly a little bit nervous now because I haven't had my, I haven't got my intro workout. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel during the session. But ah, oh, just knowing that when I was driving, I went to go and get my bottle and I was like, shit, where's that intro workout? It's not in my bag, I looked on the floor in the car it's not in there oh bollocks i've left it in the freezer that's the bad thing about putting it in the freezer you forget fuck's sake i'm pissed off i have to sip on some still rusty old water whilst i train and see if it has uh, any negative effects of uh um we're doing a trial we're gonna do a trial seems oh dear I'm pissed off man, that's pissed me right off. Oh, it's throwing me off because when you're on prep you want everything to be absolutely regiment and when little things like that happen, you shit yourself. I'm thinking, oh my God, what the fuck am I gonna do now? Hello, 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 you sexy little paintings watching. Um, if you got to this stage of the video, then of course you already know what to fucking do. Drop us a like, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate that because people get to see it a lot more and I make some fucking more money off this fucking shit. No, I'm joking, I don't make... People still ask me, George, do you make a living off YouTube? It's pocket money. It's fucking like working in a corner shop. You ain't gonna get much off this shit unless you're, you know, like a Brandon Harden or Matt Does Fitness or, or a Guzman. Um, unfortunately, you know, you're gonna have to put the groundwork in. Um, I don't know where the fuck I'm going with this if I'm honest with you, but yeah, you, you don't make tons of money off, off YouTube, especially if you're a little, little channel like mine. You make pocket money, little, little pocket money that you can reinvest into your channel is what I'd recommend doing with that pocket money. Um, so shock, fucking shock. It's bloody leg day. Why is it leg day every single bloody video? I don't know why. It just seems to fall on when I decide to record. So I'm going to stop trying to do this. In my next video, I'm recording a full day of eating. Um, which is a pool day so that is today which I'm doing this voiceover on I, I've wasted a minute of your guys time not even giving any value at all I do apologize um, so I'll dive into kind of how I do uh, warm-ups when, when it comes to a lower body session so I start off with the Stairmaster for five minutes. It helps me elevate my heart rate. Um, I'll then go on to the leg extensions, which you saw to begin with. Then I'll do a, a line leg curl or a seated leg curl. And then I'll do the adductor machine. I do that for three sets of just like 12 to 15. But over each of those three sets, what I would do is I'll increase the load in which I, which I use. So that's kind of a general warm up, which I, I, I go by. I find that, you know, I open up particular areas, especially with the adductor machine. I get the, the, a little bit of blood into the quads and the hamstrings from the, the curl and the, the the leg extension as well as obviously of course the stairmaster um, and gradually how I do my warm-up sets on the pendulum is I do roughly about three to five working sets so of course on the movements at the beginning or, or the more of the compound work I'll do more warm-up sets so uh, you know I'm not going to do four or five sets of warm-ups on isolation work like, like a leg extension um, but like v-squats and stuff like this I'll, I'll take my time warming up and of course the the lighter the warm-up set the more reps I will perform as I get closer to my working sets I will reduce the amount of um, reps I'll perform so a typical setup if I was doing like a barbell back squat and my working set let's say was 100 kilos I'd do the bar maybe for about 12 reps I would then do you know 60 kilos for a set of uh, 10 reps then I'll do 70 kilos for a set of five reps 80 kilos for a set of one or two reps 90 kilos for one one or two then i'm ready to go if that makes sense that's just an example um this fucking v squat people still do ask me george why why don't you squat um and, and right now it doesn't provide a purpose like 
I really kind of believe that, you know, some people are generally not built for, for that type of movement. But I've always said, if you don't feel a particular movement, uh, don't fucking do it. Simple as that. Like, if you're squatting and all you can feel is your hips, your lower back, and you're just moving weight from A to B, and you've been doing it for a period of time and you haven't noticed any progress in your lower body, then don't fucking do the movement. Do movements which you connect with very well. Uh, and for me right now, especially being two and a half weeks out a squat a barbell back squat isn't going to provide me much you know i haven't got much tissue around my synovial joints or any i haven't got much you know that 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 cushion which you which you have on your glutes and, and for me to implement a barbell back squat right now i just wouldn't yield any benefit from it now deeper into my surplus of course i i, I will reintroduce and experiment different types of exercises but right now i'm trying to hold on to as much tissue as i can and i need to utilize movements which i feel so leg pressing hack squats v squats are all something i feel i finish the set and go christ i feel i felt that here I'm doing my higher rep uh, work on the leg press. I've always said get strong on numerous amounts of rep ranges on every single movement that you do. So I was doing 15 to 20 reps on this leg press and damn, fucking hell. Like If you do it consistently uh, or a consistent uh, tempo, you are going to feel it. Like, fuck me. I felt like the, the fibre was all pinging in my quads. It was it was a mad thing. Uh, RDL is, again, something which I've avoided for such a long time. What I'm trying to think about here, and a lot of people, they do, they round their backs is, is terrible, is hips back. So at the top of the movement, I'm trying to push my hips back back and engage my hamstrings so the best way to engage your hamstrings is actually to push your heels into the floor so if you're sitting here right now standing uh listening to me push your feet into the floor and how much will you feel your you, you'll, you'll definitely feel your hamstrings we then moved on to some isolation work like the uh the leg uh, leg extension same old kind of shit again squeezy pumpy stuff here i did a triple drop set i did two sets of 12 to 15 then a triple drop set the gears behind me was taking forever on that leg curl so i decided to do a uh, single uh, line leg curl here what i'm trying to think about is just imagine being on top of your misses and trying to keep your hips down although saying that looking at here I, i'm contradicting myself because my hips are elevated so imagine being on top of your misses and you're trying to bang her you're driving your hips into a vagina sort of thing um and then i finished off with a adductor and ab abductor and adductor rest pause so um that's pretty much the workout i'll see you in a bit bye 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 so that was a superb session. My battery's on low as well. Fuck's sake, George, charge your bloody camera, which is annoying. So this will probably get cut off, but oh well. Stair, I want to talk about the Stairmaster. I think, I think despite the amount of output I'm doing at the moment from, you know, steps and, and, and cardio on the Stairmaster three, four times a week, I really do believe that the Stairmaster has contributed so much to my progress from a, a physique standpoint and also just progression in the gym. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't know why, but I, I think the Stairmaster is, is literally the best, the best form of cardio you can do. I, I, I've said it, I, I'm quite biased in regards to that aspect of things. I really think that it does provide a benefit. Um, uh, and I've, I've, I've surprised myself with how much I've been able to progress over this diet phase and retain the amount of tissue. I mean, my legs are not the greatest, don't get me wrong. They're not the, the chunkiest, but they look fucking good. And I do believe that the Stairmaster has contributed to that quite a lot. A lot of people slate the Stairmaster saying that it, it's, it's definitely hard. Of course it is hard, but a lot of people mention that the legs fade and stuff like that. Some of the best bodybuilders I've seen have the greatest, who have the greatest legs are doing the Stairmaster. And I really think that it provides that much of a benefit. So for you punks out there who slate the Stairmaster, I think anecdotes like just looking at people's physiques and looking at my physique I really, really believe that it has provided a benefit the session was phenomenal really really good hit beat my numbers on my previous session well which I did there that's my new gym now that's my new gym full-time I'll be training there full-time which I'm very excited for and my motivation just to go there and train is is crazy high like I was lagging a few weeks back in regards to motivation really really struggling in fact but now my motivation to, to train knowing that I'll be training there is way higher than what it was previously so that, that that's really good uh, and I'm generally kind of happy like three weeks out and I, I'm still managing to yield some sort of progress in my training sessions which is something I wouldn't expect to do especially in my lower body side of things and like I said especially with the amount of output I'm doing so your logbook is always your best feedback tool to 
how well you're performing in the gym, kind of how much volume you're doing, whether it's too much. Like if you notice that you're progressing drastically, your logbook will, will tell you like the, this is what needs to be changed, whether it's volume, whether it's more food, whether it's whatever it may be, your logbook is your number one feedback tool. So I know a lot of people don't logbook and that's totally fine, each to their own, but I really think providing or, or knowing how much you are lifting and being aware of how many sets you're doing per muscle group, etc. Just having that awareness, you'll you'll find that you're Understanding in your life, I've always said data is your number one best friend. It is your number one best friend when you're a surplus, when you're a deficit, because you know what lesson you know is working, what isn't working. As you can see, I'm chatting a load of shit, I'm, I'm waffling on because I've had a pre workout. I left my intro at home, but it didn't affect me, which is strange. I actually still managed to yield a lot of progress despite not having my intro workout. So it just goes to show you don't need to actually rely on an intro workout. Um, I did, however, get very dehydrated throughout the session just drinking water. Um, I do miss the electrolytes in the intra workout so I do believe electrolytes is important whilst you're training for sure but other than that you know I didn't feel like I was dropping off in performance I was really kind of sluggish or anything like that so are intra workouts essential no will then give you that extra two percent potentially get me home charge this camera and get me some fucking food I'm down at the bottom of the garden for a serious chat. This is where the serious chat occurs, at the bottom of the garden where, I'm always honest, and you know, you know hopefully there's no fucking birds today which are gonna piss me off either. Last time was an absolute nightmare. I'm gonna be honest, and you know me, I'm quite harsh on myself at times. I've always been a realistic person. I'm very kind of real. I don't set myself unrealistic goals of me telling myself I'm gonna be a natural pro in like three years time, when in reality of things, you don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. So I'm very realistic and I know what I'm capable of and I know kind of where I am at in, in regards to, you know, in life. Like I know, I, I, it's like me comparing myself to fucking, I don't know, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Like he's way above me and he's always going to be superior to me. I'm very, you know, just realistic with things. I'm not really sure where I'm going with that if I'm honest with you. I'm competing in the junior bodybuilding class this year and I've seen, I see the people online. I see who I'm going up against this year. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not doubting myself here. I'm not telling myself, oh my God, I've got no chance of winning at all because you never know what could happen you really don't know but like I said I'm realistic and I look at people especially this year who are competing and I compare that to myself and I think fucking hell I've got absolutely no chance and that's me being honest that's not me going no I know people I appreciate everyone that tells me in the comments first place you're guaranteed you've worked so hard first place this first place that the trophy's coming home to you which is greatly appreciated I absolutely love it. it it does mean a lot to me but like I said realistically here I've seen who I'm going up against this year I'm going up against people who are 30 40 pounds heavier than me in body weight which is a fucking a ridiculous amount for a natural athlete for a natural athlete keep that in con keep that into consideration i've seen some people this year and i'm just thinking you know i've got no chance and i me and aj have spoken about this and he totally agrees with me and i would much rather my coach tell me and be honest saying look you he's this this individual is going to be hard to beat this year the chance of you beating him are going to be slimmer and i'd rather, much rather that until in instead of someone blowing smoke on my ass telling me you can do this george you can beat anyone because let's be honest realistically you've probably seen my physique and go i'm not really sure if he can win this year and that's been i, I look at myself and think that all the time of course i mean yes i i, I do want to fucking win I, i'm not dieting for let's say 30 weeks plus not to win anything and i am still going to be doing the juniors however i want to ensure that i give myself the best chance in order for me to actually do do well this year in in competing because like I said I don't want to fucking come like last no one wants to come last do that at the end of the day my decision is I'm competing in the juniors in a couple of weeks time so the BNBF Southern in, in 2.5 weeks time and I'm doing the UK uh, DFBA um, D, DFBA fucking hell I'm doing the Southern jun juniors the following week after but I'm also going to be entering into the lightweights and now the main reason I'll be entering into the lightweights is because I think the cutoff body weight for the lightweights is like 70 kilos 72 kilos and I'm going to be up against people that are going to be realistically probably the same height as me probably the same weight with, for sure the same weight with me and I'm going to have more of a chance I'm definitely going to have more of a chance because I've seen some individuals this year and they're weighing in like 180 pounds 
pounds and the fucking lean they've only got like five another five pounds to come off them to be absolutely shredded and i'm 147 pounds right now so the, the the sizes are completely different yes most of these individuals are taller than me they've got a lot more muscle mass than me and i'm like i said i'm just being fucking realistic i'm just it is what it is as they say i love Ireland. it is what it fucking is i want to give myself the best opportunity and, and so does aj in order for me to do well do i think i'm gonna win a junior bodybuilding show this year I don't fucking know, potentially, maybe not, who knows, it's that is, it's whoever turns up on the day, you know, you're getting judged based upon someone's fucking opinion uh, at the end of the day, but realistically, seeing what I've seen this year, seeing people's preps on Instagram, stuff like that, which I'm very supportive of, and I'm not bottling it, but I do want to give myself the best opportunity in order for me to, to win a show this year, I've been talking for four and a half minutes of just chatting shit, probably fucking re repetitive, same old stuff coming out my mouth, so I'll be doing the BMBF Midland lightweights and I'll be doing the UK DFBA northern uh, lightweights which is a couple of weeks after that so if you're up north and you want to come say hello to the Georgie boy and come watch the show then you're more than welcome to but like I said yep yeah, I'm being fucking really honest and really just realistic with with how where I'm at and stuff like that and like I said I want to give myself the best uh, best opportunity to win comment down below garden if you've watched this whole video I sincerely hope you enjoyed this prep so far recording a full day of eating today be on the lookout for that hopefully tomorrow so Thursday or Friday at some point and I'll showcase what I'm eating how I'm training etc that type of stuff anything you guys want to see of course let us know and let us know your thoughts in the comments down below as well I'd really appreciate that so thank you for watching and I'll see you in a bit sort your fucking night because guess what you misses she's probably a fucking cunt <laughs> see you in a bit